Last time in the war room, we talked about supply, we talked about specialized units, and we talked about barrage. Um, what I learned about supply is that you have to think several steps ahead like a chess game. Not only are you going to bring supply to the front to sustain the units, that's your fuel and food and what have you, you have to have supply in order to have combat. All right, So you're going to have to start putting supply dumps all around areas in order to uh, efficiently not only bring the fight to them, but to fight in itself. All right, so that's what I learned about supply. Overall, not a hard concept. Um, it was quite simple. Uh, of course, if you guys have questions, ask, and I'll answer them. Uh, number two, I learned about specialized units. We learned about HQs and how they operate amongst the game. They're very effective. They're very, very important. They drive supply much further down the road than the trucks can. We learned that the trucks... Um, they don't use supply, but they're also very ineffective. They're only delivering four um, supply points. I, mean, I, I think there may be some units that deliver more. I'm not sure. But overall, they don't deliver much. So you, you're going to need more trucks. If you lose those trucks, I can see that being a huge issue in the game. And then finally, barrage. Barrage is a ineffective but a good long-distance way of attacking a unit. If you hit good, it's usually very effective and destructive. But normally, um, there's a lot of stuff that will shift you to the left on your combat roll table that will um, make you miss. So, and, and rightfully so. It's, it's an artillery barrage. It's not the most effective and, and accurate thing in the world. So in this next episode, we're going into aluminum forecast. And we're going to learn about aircraft and aircraft bases. I did want to show you some of the charts that I forgot to show you in the last one. Um, here is your dump truck wagon table, okay? So when enemies, we didn't have it in the last game, but when enemies take over a truck or a dump area, you would roll here. This is one of the charts for that. It'll tell you how, mu how much percentage of that you've taken as far as supply. Let's see, oh, here's your combat barrage table. Let me move you up a little bit, I apologize. It tells you how many you get. So if your unit is a one RE or less, you only get one token to, to, to pay for combat, two otherwise. Defenders always one, unless it's one RE or less, then they get to do it for free. Defenders, if you don't have enough supply to attack, then you're halved combat, but defenders can always attack. All right, that's barrage. And then of course, we did barrage ourselves. Sorry, we, we used this table and I showed you. And barrage is great, when you hit, it's very effective, but when you but there's so many he things here that could shift you over to the left where you won't hit. So just something to keep in mind. And uh, those are the charts that they told us about. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot more coming um, with these new rules. So I'll see you on the table. Hello everyone, welcome back to the War Room. Before we go on with Scenario 5, I just want to go over the sequence of play one more time with you because now we're adding more rules in. Those rules are affecting more of our sequence of play and we haven't gone over this since, um, I believe, the third scenario. So, you got a couple of segments here. The over phase. The over phase is where we do a lot of logistical issues in the game. Weather is not going to be used in the fifth scenario, not yet. Um, any rules that are not being used are going to be added into in the last scenario. But weather is not one of them. Supply usage. This is where we do all of our supply, where we, we do all our figuration of all logistics for both sides at the same time to figure out how many supply points are necessary to sustain the armies that we have on the map. That's where you choose the supply levels. If you're taking from dumps, if you're taking from HQs, really simply put. Third, reinforcement placement segment. This is where SPs get added to the board and units get added to the board according to the scenario 
uh, segment in the scenario book, okay? Um, we don't just add things in. I think the main campaign does allow you to add things in, but under dice rolls. But for the most part, the smaller campaigns, they're going to tell you what gets added and, and in what turn. Replacement reorganization segment, we have not talked about that yet. I don't think it's going to be brought into this next scenario, but probably the last one. And then the first player determination segment, basically we roll to find out who goes first, or whatever way we want to actually, and then um, that person goes, all right? So it's not just the Germans go first and the Russians. It'll change, all right? So now I'll back out a little bit. And we don't need to go much further than this, but in the player turn one and, of course, player turn, or player turn two, um, you have these segments here. Um, air unit return, air unit refit are going to be added into the game, okay? Up to this point, we've only played with mode determination, movement and reaction and then a combat and exploitation and so forth and we'll go over that again however we're now adding the final steps which is air unit return and air unit refit because we're dealing with airplanes and air bases all right so i'll see you on the table here real soon so let's start with the objective here of aluminum overcast the idea behind this is that we're going to be using air power only we have kona top over here, or else uh, has its stuff here as well. I'm gonna move you guys around, so be prepared. Sorry. So there's Aurel, and they got their guys up there, about 20 supply points a piece. Um, there are about four um, Soviet Union ground units, and there's about three um, German units, including a flame. For some reason, they wanted me to bring in a flame battalion, which is fine. Uh, but they're not in use. According to this, um, special rules, ground units cannot move or fight except for providing flak. Destroy rail hexes or anything else. Um, so they can't do anything but flak. Um, all rail hexes are fair game to both sides. Supply needs are ignored. So why they have supply down, I don't know. But basically the objective here is to learn how to, so for example, the Germans, to fly out there at their different air ranges, and then try to hit those targets. Same thing for the Russians over here. Simple, effective. I think it's going to be a very easy um, uh, scenario here. Okay, so air units. Let's talk about air units. Now, there's a lot to cover, about as much as supply. I'm not going to go through all of it. I'm going to go through the general ideas behind it because I mean, I, I'm encouraging you to read the book because there's, there's a lot of little rules that go with air units. So let's start with what an air unit is. In the left-hand corner, you have the type, all right? T, yellow, is a tactical bomber. That's the Stuka, all right? We got the tactical bomber here. That's a T. The next thing you have is you have your air-to-air -air rating. Uh, no parentheses means the air unit is offensive. This is a bomber. This is a strategic bomber, so it is not offensive, okay? So the parentheses means it's defensive only. Followed by the ground support strength. Obviously, that's going to be high because it's a, it's a tactical bomber, okay? Now, the bomb says it helps identify the ground support value. So, I don't know if you can see that, but that's a bomb. And it just basically means it's, it's for ground support. So, if you see a bomb on here, that, it's just a quick reference. Oh, this is a ground support unit if you don't know what a JU-87B is. All right. Next, you have transport capacity. Now, if this was a, a, a transport there'd be a little number by the bomb that would show how many um, transports it can carry, like how many tokens of, of supply. You, you can station these things kind of like the trucks and transport supply all over the place and other units, apparently. And the last number up here, the 34, for the JU anyway, that is the range, all right? That is the actual range in um, hexes it could go. Regard regardless of the terrain, it's an airplane, it can move one movement point per hex, all right? They have their range, which we talked about, all right? They move during their movement, exploitation, and reaction phases. Units moving from a base to a barrage target hex are considered to be on station, all right? So whenever you're moving to an enemy unit to attack it, that's on station. Or if you're moving from here to an enemy air unit, that's called interception, okay? Those are both are called stations, 
all right? You can either move from base to base or base to station. That's how it works. So if you're going from friendly base to friendly base, that's one way of moving, or you're going to station, which is to attack something. Now, if you wish to move as a stack, you have to start as a stack. Then you can move together as a stack and do whatever it is that you gotta do. If units are in different hexes, you know, this guy's over here somewhere, and you wanna move together and attack in the same hex, then you can combine into one hex. When you are flying into an area where there's another enemy airplane, that's called interception, you cannot wait for your other units to move there. So for example, here, I'll, I'll give you an example. I got the Soviet Union, and they got their little guy here. You move in here, you might have other units nearby to go in and attack. You can't do that. You have to take care of the combat immediately. You cannot wait for other airplane units to join you. Okay, you have to have the dog fight immediately. It's considered immediate. Unlike if you were stationing at a barrage area and you're trying to attack ground troops, then you can wait for other units. So it's one of those rules where if you're getting into the fight, you're getting into it right away. If your plane's done and it's coming back onto a friendly base, this there happens to be a friendly base under this huge stack, then this guy becomes automatically inactive. It's part of the the, the, the game. So as soon as you move into a friendly supply base, he is inactive. You would move him underneath the base token. I'll just show you what that token looks like. This is a base token. This is a level two. I think there's more units than this is allowed, but I think it's just for the game. But yeah, so if this guy moves back from his flight, they recommend you put him underneath. And you know he's inactive. And then any units on top of your base are considered active as a way of quick referencing. Weather, now we haven't talked about weather, and that's coming in the next scenario, but weather can inhibit any kind of flights, partially or all, depending on what it is. So you, you may not be able to use your tactical bombers, but you may be able to use strategic bombers, okay? I didn't talk about that really much, but here, let's go over it. So I told you about that little symbol in the upper left-hand corner. The T is a tactical bomber. The F and the red dot, that is a fighter, all right? There's also something called an it has an S, a blue S, that's a strategic bomber. And then you have what is called a transport. And those are the ones that you move around the tokens. Just so that we know what the different types are. If for some reason, let me move these guys to the center here so you can see them. If for some reason you have two reduced airplanes, and they're, they're the same type with the same value numbers like this one. You got the parentheses one and the eight and they're both JU-87Bs. If they're both reduced on their other side and they meet up in the same hex, they can combine and make one full unit if you so please to do so. At no extra cost or what have you, they will become one full unit again. All reinforcing air units must go to a supplied friendly base. We're also gonna learn that the sequence in which these guys move can be used to do a one-two punch. You can move to attack a unit and then do a barrage unit afterwards. You're gonna notice that in the uh, game sequence, which we'll go over when we play the game, air units only have two modes, active or inactive. Like I said, you put the inactive units underneath the air base, you put the active units above to show that they're ready to go. If you have a unit on station, that is, they move from their base and they're on station, whether they're barraging or they're intercepting. They're going to stay there until either A, they, they complete their mission, B, they get damaged, or C, they have to return according to, excuse me, air unit return segment. Uh, let's say I go, I barrage an enemy unit, I, I complete it, I go back, I'm done. That's as long as I can stay on station for. Or I go into that interception and I fight and I destroy it. Or if I get destroyed, then I have to go back. I have no choice. I have to go back. But the way it works is this. I have 34, as you see in the yellow, the 34 movement points. I can go a couple of movement points, attack, and if I win that interception, I can keep going. I can go whatever's left over and then intercept the next one. And if I win, I can do it again and just keep going and keep going until I run out of movement points. And remember, you have to be able to return to a friendly supplied airbase, otherwise you'll lose your unit. Now, if a unit, if one of your air units does go to a unsupplied friendly airbase, it is possible you can land there, but here's the problem. Um, he's gonna remain inactive and not be able to fly anywhere until that base becomes active again. 
transport airplanes, which I don't have any here right now, have a special exemption. We'll talk about that later, but they can basically station like trucks because they're transport airplanes. They can go back and forth from the base to where they want to go multiple times. So before we get into air bases, really quickly, I just want to kind of reiterate what I'm doing here. Um, I'm not going over all of the air power rules because again, I don't want a five hour video. I don't want to make an audio book. A lot of these things I'm going to be doing on the scenario that you're going to be able to see. So I don't think there's a justification of going through every single rule. And there are a lot of little rules and when they pop up, I'll use them. But I, I don't think we need to bore ourselves with all of the little intricacies about you know refitting and what have you. Because uh, I don't think that's justified. So let's move on to air bases. It's not so difficult. So general rules is there's only one air base per hex. Okay, that's a level two air base. Uh, and really quickly, let me let me go over what the air base is actually telling you before I go any further. I apologize. The air base, the top number is the ID. So that's number two. That's air base number two. And then underneath is the air base level. It's a level two air base. Now the ID, if you decide to use the back of the rule book, I'll show you what it looks like, the back of the rule book. You could photocopy this and the ID, you could write the ID up there. You could take units off of the uh, board. So no more than one air base per hex. Any number of air units may use a single base regardless of level. So, you know, I, I was wondering about all of these airplanes, but apparently that's legal because not all of them will be active. Um, the level of the base has the following effects. One, air base level affects refit as a multiplier of the refit die roll. So at some point, we're going to roll a die, and then it's going to be multiplied by the level. And that's how many units can be serviced and refit. So obviously, whatever I roll, if I roll a four, I'm going to have eight. I can, I can make eight of these guys ready to fly. The rest would have to remain inactive. Air bases, number two, air bases have a flak rating equal to their level. So he's a level two, he's gonna be a level two for flak. Uh, for those of you who don't know what flak is, that's the, the guns that they fire up at enemy airplanes if they go into this hex. Air bases have no defensibility or strength on their own. The enemy may capture an air base by entering its hex, which makes the hex unsupplied. So if infantry unit moves in here, the base instantly becomes unsupplied. They can't use it right away. Only on the next turn will they be able to use it and supply it themselves. When they're attacked by ground support and barrage versus facility table, okay, so when somebody's using artillery or air units to attack it, you may lose levels. So that may be reduced. No base can ever go below level one in this way. You can remove these. There is a way to destroy these and remove them from the map, but you can't do it from enemy barrages. Air bases are either supplied or unsupplied. The usable level of an air base is determined by the amount of supply expended on it in the over phase. So in the over phase, just like all the other units that you're paying for, um, you can either be it supplied or not supplied. So for example, this particular air base is a level two. So I need two supply in order to fully supply it. If I don't, then I have to mark it. So here's an example of marking it. They suggest, obviously if you're using the, um, the paper on the back of the book, you can do that. Otherwise, Using one of these guys, these step losses, will mark it. So if I only supply one point, I would just put this on top, okay? If it's fully, just leave it as it is. But yeah, here, so if, I only, if I'm being cheap today, he's only a level one. He's not destroyed, but they recommend marking it in this way so that you know. And then that way when I do my die roll, I'll only get one times whatever that die roll is. So obviously I'm gonna have less units being uh, utilized from that base. If for some reason, unlike other, like the units, if you don't want to, you don't have to spend any of your supply points and then he just becomes unsupplied. So then you would just take one of these guys right here and that shows he's no longer being supplied for this round. So unlike your infantries and what have you, where you have to supply it if you have the available SPs, you don't have to in this scenario. Air bases are only supplied for the player who paid for it. If you capture an enemy air base during the movement, again, it is unsupplied until you supply it in the next over phase. So as soon as you, just like the enemy, if you move into an, uh, an air base, an enemy air base, it instantly becomes unsupplied once you take it. Not until the next turn can you supply it yourself. And same thing for the original owner. If you take it and then the owner takes it back, same thing, unsupplied. Enemy units that are adjacent to any bases do not affect air base functions. There is something that occurs if the enemy units occupy it, 
Um, I'm sure it has something to do with taking it over, but we won't go into that just now. Building air bases. In the replacement or reorganization segment, a player may build or improve air bases up to one level each. Only one. So if you're building a new air base, it's going to be a level one. That base that you're seeing right now, it's a level two. I can upgrade it to a level three. I cannot go to level four or anything higher than that in one turn. It can only go up one level at a time. I believe, oh, it says here level three is the highest it can go. In order to build or improve an air base, an engineer capable unit must occupy the hex and the owning player must expend one supply point. Reducing air bases. You may reduce any of your air bases one level in the replacement reorganization segment. You may reduce as many bases as you desire. No bases may be reduced more than one level at a time. At least a half a regimental equivalent of a friendly unit must occupy an air base's hex to, the, to reduce it. it. Doesn't have to be an engineer, so it's easier to demolish than it is to build. Destroy any inactive air units in a level one air base that is reduced. So if this is level one and I reduce it and it's being destroyed and I have inactive air units sitting in there, they get destroyed with it. And that's all there is for air bases. So now we're gonna go into the actual scenario and try to learn this as we go. We're at the table and we're in the over phase of this one round only game. Okay, so how this works is we're going to go through the over phase one step at a time. Weather is not determined because we haven't talked about that yet. Supply usage. This is where we're going to spend supply points on air bases in order to supply our airplanes. Here's our German air base. We have the Russian one all the way up in the northeast. It's a level two. The bottom number is the level. The top number is the identification number. Okay, we don't worry about that. But the two... All right, is the level of this base. So in order to supply it, it's one point for each level if I want to fully supply it. I don't have to, but then what would be the worth of this particular scenario? So I'm gonna supply it with two. So I will spend the points. There's 15, I bring in my little extra thing. It's 15 and a three, that's 18. So this base is now fully supplied. Next we go into the reinforcement placement segment. This is where any units coming in from uh, reinforcements on the uh, scenario um, recommendations comes in or you roll for it depending on whatever campaign you're using. Okay, we haven't talked about all that stuff yet. But you know, any extra SPs, blah, blah, blah. In this particular one, there are no reinforcements for either player. Replacement reorganization segment, this is where you can rebuild dead or damaged units. You can improve facilities and air bases if you wish to. Now we're going to the first player segment. We determine how that's done. So the Soviets rolled a four, Germans rolled a three. So the Soviets will be the first player in this round. And now we're gonna go into the game. So I'm gonna go down the list over here. Uh, air unit return, which we're not doing because none of the airplanes have been sent out. Air unit refit. We're gonna go ahead and for the Soviets, roll their die, right? And the die is a two. So two times two is four. So now I could take off this little air base and above it, I could set up up to four air units. So I'm gonna do a mix. I'm gonna do a mix of fighters and the tactical bombers. I'll place them on top. And that's gonna represent, and this is recommended by the, the rule book if you remember. Um, this shows who's available, all right? And I'm just, I'm interested only in the Soviets at this point. Next is gonna be mode determination. Now, there's only two modes for air units. It's either active or inactive. So we have a few active, the rest are inactive. We can't use them in this turn. So the next part of this is stationing. So I have a couple of fighters, all right? I'm gonna utilize stationing. They can move, I don't know if you can see that very well, but they can move 36, that yellow 36, all right? So we can count it out, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, all right? I'm gonna put him all the way. This is on station, all right? In fact, I'm moving him over here. So what I'm doing is I'm tactically placing them in an area that's on station. If any of the enemy units, turn just a little bit here, appear within five hexes, which is pretty darn close, one, two, three, four, five, all right, they can intercept. Now, the way interception works, uh, I'll explain it in a little bit, is, but you have to announce it. So, as since I'm the phasing player, if, if during the non-phasing movement of my partner here decides to go into the area between five hexes and to where I'm at, I have to make an announcement that I'm intercepting. If I don't, that's bad. But anyway, let's move on. So the way movement works in this game is 
like for example, this IL, he's 33. I don't know if you can see him. Let me just try to clear this for you. That's 33, okay? Um, you can fly out somewhere and then fly back within 33 uh, hexes. So it's not like, oh, you, you know, you have to have half and half like the other units on the ground. It's, it's a lot different. All right, so they're going into their station. The only time that we have to worry about sending them back is once they're either complete with their mission, such as this barrage that's about to happen with these two, or an interception and they lose. That's the only time we have to worry about sending guys back. Okay, so now we're going to conduct this barrage attack, okay? So I'm attacking this particular unit right here, all right? And I'm going to use this unit's barrage strength to do it. Now, he only has one, which is in the lower right-hand corner. It's seven. So I'm going to look on my chart that's off map here, or off camera, I should say. And all I have is seven. Now, if I would have combined the other guy in here, that would have been 14. I'm, only, I'm going small. I'm just doing this to go through it and see how it works. And I believe he's going to have a flak coming back at me. Let's go over the column shifts that I need to do. The first thing I need to worry about is what kind of land is the target in, and it's open, right? So there are no friendly adjacent units, that's ground units. Uh, so I go one shift to the left to the 3-4 column, which isn't good for me. But it's at least a 4-RE and less than 6. So I get two columns to the right, so I go better. So now I get to roll my dice. Okay, let's see what we get. I get a six, and I completely miss. All right, now his job would be done. However, we're going to go ahead and conduct flat now. Since he, this unit, is a RE of four, I don't know if you can see that really well, he gets a strength of four. So now I get to roll two dice. Roll a seven. Seven, nothing happens. So the airplane gets away. And the book tells you that flak in this game is very weak so either you're gonna abort the guy or take a step loss on abort either way he lost this guy here goes back to the base instantly because his mission is done and we'll do the same thing for this guy now this guy's a little harder all right he's in the heavy woods let me take a look at the cost of that it's close all right there is a column shift for close so we have seven again all right, he gets one shift to the left because there's no friendly uh, enemy ground units. It's also close, so it's another column shift to the left. Not very good for my guy. He is also a four, so two shifts to the right. So let's do this again. Let's see what happens. We got an eight. No good. So he misses by one point. But at least you get to see how this uh, actually works out. So let's do our flak again. They are a four on their RE. There are some things that add to the flak. Let me show you that, that, that chart. This is your flak chart right here, and where it says each step has a flak, if you read that, it tells you what you can add to it. We don't have anything that can add to it, so we're just gonna do the four and see what happens. Rolls an eight. Same thing, nothing happens. So very weak, and then this guy's done. Instantly, he goes back. And they're both in the inactive segment of the airbase. Now, going down my chart of things to do for the first player, exploitation, there's no exploitation, and clean up. And now the second player would do his thing. These guys stay on station. They don't go anywhere. They don't return until when they receive an abort or step loss or finishes a ground support attack, the air unit must return to base or during an interception, they fail. That's when they would return to base. Otherwise, these guys don't have to return. They keep going. So now the Germans turn. They're going to go ahead and do their refit. All right. They got fully. I'm sorry. I rolled two. I'll just keep the one. All right. They got 10. There's only seven units. So all of them are active. Now remember what I said about interception. As soon as it reaches that five hex limit, one, two, three, four, five, the person who owns this guy who's sitting here, the non-phasing player now, he has to make an announcement. If he doesn't, he gets he can have the chance to attack first, and that could be an advantage to the player. So, And he will. We're going to go ahead and say that he does. Now, they're in a stack, and the rule says as long as you move in a stack, you can move together. So we're going to go ahead, and we're going to move, and he's going to intercept. So um, one, two, three, four, five, we'll say here. And when there's an interception, he can move further out. All right. 
the rule book says that these guys might be bounced around the map because of interceptions, and that can happen. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. He's not close enough. One, two, three, four, five. Five, he can't reach him, so they can go around. All right, I'm just positioning the tactical bombers. Since there are no attacking units up north, they're able to take some of their guys out, and we'll go through that real quickly. So now we're going to go over something called doubling up. All right, there's a way to get an advantage in a fight. All right, so he's the aggressor. He's the attacker. He intercepted. But they're the defender, and they can do something called doubling up. So as long as you have two more units than the one, and, this, and since he has three, okay, so he has at least two more than this guy, he's going to be the attacker, but they're going to be able to do a defender's doubling up. All right? When selecting air units for a round of combat, the defender announces the intention to use doubling, which we will. He selects two air units, full or reduced, Two counters, regardless of strength, instead of one. The attacker rolls two dice. He does his normal attack, which we'll go over. Except he subtracts both defending air unit values from the dice roll, instead of just one. So, let's go over the attack first. So, beginning with the attacker, each player selects the air units of his choice to fight. Obviously, he has this one. The, there he's gonna, My guy's going to use two. Defender is announcing any uh, doubling, but usually this is the part where the attacker does his announcement first. So now the attacker will roll his dice. Oh, not a very good roll. All right, natural roll of two. All right, he's going to add the attacker air unit's air-to-air -air rating, which is a two. So now he's got four. And then subtract the defending air unit's air-to-air -air rating from the roll. Now, normally this would be a one-to-one -one fight. It would be one unit of defender against two. But because I have doubling, I have eight. As you can see here, these are BF-109s. All right, and I got two of them. That's eight. So it's actually zero. And then we're going to apply this to the air-to-air -air combat table and execute the result. So since he literally rolled a zero because of the doubling, all right, he gets one step and an abort. So he loses a step, so we'll flip him to his other side, and he goes back to where he came from immediately. So I flipped him. He, he was on this side, okay? But now he's on this side. And then he'll go back to base just like this all right he's gone and that's the effects of doubling up that's the effects of doubling up which can be very very helpful in a dog fight i'm sorry i'm probably making you guys dizzy here i apologize now we're going to go on to these fights here at least one of them i'll show you that one and we'll probably stop it there i don't think it's a reason to go on and show the whole scenario because it's pretty much simple at this point so we do our barrage again so we're gonna go ahead and count up all of our ground units um, power, which is eight and eight, which is 16. Let me find my page. And we're gonna go through everything again. Now this is a wood. So hold on, let me find my stuff here. So 16, it's close. So we're gonna do one shift column to the left. Now here, I'm gonna bring you over here so you can see what I'm doing here. It was here because it's close because of the wood. One column shift to the left. All right, there are no adjacent friendly units. So that's gonna be one shift column to the left as well. All right, and that was a level two RE. All right, no, it says here specifically nothing about two RE, so we're gonna leave it as is. So that's gonna be the chart we're gonna use. All right, simple enough, I'll roll. All right, we rolled a six, and obviously we missed, it's way up here. So then that would be done for these units here. They would return to their base. They're done, their mission's over with. So as you can see, for air units, it's really not that hard. Just peculiar, I guess, but let's keep going. We might as well finish up. So I've got eight, I got 16 versus this guy. He's out in the open this time. 18, so let's do it again. So out in the open, we don't have to worry about the very close terrain, no friendly units. He comes over to the left. All right, he is a level two, so there is no column shift for that. Let's roll it. Seven. So I'm starting to see a little bit of a pattern here. Barraging sucks. So unless you bring a whole bunch of firepower or you bring artillery with it, because you can do this during an artillery barrage, you can assist. These are going to be terrible rolls. Okay, so the Soviets are now going into their player turn two. All right, and they're going into the air unit return. So this is now where they have to go back to base. There's these guys right here. Now, when they're returning to base, they still follow all the rules of interception. So if I had some BF-109 somewhere stationed around here and he's going back, if he runs through there, he can be intercepted. So he's going to go back. 
So once he came, he's off the map. And so now we start the whole process all over again. Remember, with player turn two, your air bases are still supplied, so they're still good to go. Air unit refit is gonna start all over again. We're gonna roll our die. Two times two is four. So four units of my choice will be uh, taken care of here. And just understand that any air units that were in here that were damaged, like the one at the bottom, I can use him, but he stays damaged. It's not until the, it's the replacement reorganization segment that allows you to rebuild or refix that unit. So I'm kind of stuck. So I'm going all over again, attempting to attack these units. Now, technically, for this particular game, these red rails, those are all Russian rails. But I don't care. We're doing this for the game purposes to show you how this works. So the same thing is going to happen here. I've got two, two IL-2s. i got to make three. I mean, I'll just push them over here for protection. I don't care about him being in there. So I've got two areas of rail that we're going to destroy. So we're going to be using this particular table. It's the ground support and barrage versus facility table. And this is going to tell us what exactly happens with what occurs with whatever we roll. So let me just get you a little closer here over it so you can read it a little bit better, not at an angle. So I'm going to go be off map here, or off camera, excuse me, and I'm going to figure it out. So the two INLs together, that's a ground support of seven, that's 14. Okay, so at 14, I'm sitting right in here. And then one railroad, railroad damage, air base, or hedgehog reduced by one level, and then two is by two levels. And then if you get a hashtag, whatever the hashtag is, increase in hits applied to a port. So I don't think we're dealing with ports right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll. It's one, so it doesn't matter. So it says railroad damage, air base, or hedgehog reduced by one level. So what we would do over here, underneath those guys, would be a rail damage marker. So now that's damaged. You don't have any supply going and using any of these rails or any troops being moved. And that's what a rail damage looks like in this game. And then obviously we do it again. That's only seven. We come over here, seven, obviously a little bit harder to roll. We roll one dice, not two. It's a two and it's a miss. So simply put, that is rail damage. You can use that for um, uh, rails, air bases, and things like that, supply. Just to show you a result I finally got, I got disorganized. I might as well go get that for you, just to show you. Um, it's kind of funny. It took me four Stukas to get a disorganized on one two regimental equivalent infantry unit. So it does take quite a bit, and you can coordinate this attack with ground units if you can. So um, I'm not even counting the points here. Again, this is just a demonstration of how air units work. And it seems pretty damn simple. It's just you have to um, remember the little rules. The, the, the rule book is very clear, so it's not hard to follow. Um, so good luck to you guys. I think this is going to be a good uh, lesson in just how air units work generally. And we'll move on from here.